Hi there, thanks for joining us for another Quick Tips video. Today's Quick Tip video is on reamping. Reamping involves taking a pre recorded track, sending it out of your audio hardware into an amplifier, miking that amplifier up or taking a direct line out and bringing it back in through our hardware and recording a new track with that new sound. You might be asking, why would you reamp a track? Well, in this case, I wrote this song in a small apartment in London, and I think I wrote it really quickly. I can't remember if I had a guitar amp, but in whatever case, the neighbours certainly wouldn't have appreciated my dodgy guitar playing through an amplifier in the early hours of the morning. So what you're hearing in this track is my Telecaster going straight in to the Steinberg VST amp rack. In this song, the vocals are based on the guitar riff, so I plugged a microphone in as soon as I came up with that riff and started building ideas. What you're hearing in the background is still only a demo. The pedal steel playing on this track is played by a guy called BJ Cole. Now Sting reckons he's the best pedal steel player in the world. Let's quickly take the VST amp rack off one of the guitar parts and have a listen. So there's a direct sound in comparison with the VST amp rack sound. I've got a compressor and a tremolo pedal going into something that looks like quite a famous replication of a great British amplifier. The clean sound in the amp rack is really quite good, but I know if you're a guitarist, it's not the real thing. But today I'm going to quickly show you how to set up your own pedals and amplifiers as a send and return inside a Cubase. You can use the same process I'm using today to add any external effects unit to Cubase. You can go to Devices VST Connections or hit F4 and add external effect. Generally, a guitar recording is going to be a mono track unless you've got some sort of crazy delay or ricken back a stereo output. So these are both mono tracks. Next up, we need to add the connections. So first of all, add your audio device and then select a spare output or outputs if you've got a stereo effects unit. Then I'm plugging a lead into my amplifier and I'm going over to my Steinberg UR44 and I'm plugging the other end of that lead into the connection that I've just specified for the output. So now I've got a send in between the UR44 and the amplifier. Now I need to get a return connection. I'm specifying channel 2 because that's free, so I'm plugging my microphone into channel 2 and that microphone I'm going to use to capture the sound coming out of the amplifier. If you need line inputs then you can use free line inputs as well. Right mouse click on the channel and add an effects channel to the selected channel. In this case, it's lead high. Now I'm going down to external effects and I'm selecting the external effect unit that I just set up. I'm naming the track, it's a reamp, and as soon as I hit add track, I've got that new effects channel. Because I'm taking a signal out of my computer through hardware into an amplifier, and then I'm waiting for sound pressure to hit a microphone and then go back through my mic pre and then back into Cubase, there's going to be a delay from the original recording to the recorded material that's coming back through that loop. That will result in anything that we record through this loop being slightly delayed. So Steinberg have introduced this delay compensation which is really quite clever and easy to use. To use it, you open up the insert that's now up in the racks and click on the little button to the right and listen. I'm using a dynamic microphone and that's a Shure SM7B. So I'm just finding the right place for it in front of the amplifier. Then it's a matter of getting the tone that I want and then setting a level. Now we've got the connections sorted and our levels right, let's go up to File, Export, Audio Mix Down, select Batch Export and the new effects channel. We want to add this new file to our project and also we want to name it with a unique name so it shows up on the channel list. Hit export and now it's exporting it in real time and of course it has to export it in real time because it has to send that signal through the whole loop, through the amplifier, back through the microphone, into the hardware and then back into the software. Now the delay compensation will take care of that delay and when it's finished we'll have a new track at the bottom of our project window with the new recording. Now I only bounced the solo because I didn't want to keep you here all day. So I go down to the bottom and I can see that new track. I'm dragging it up to my guitar folder and then I'm going to specify an output because my guitars are all being sent through a group at the moment. So I just go over to routing and then select the guitar group and the guitars are coming out of the guitar group. Now if you want to play that with the original guitar line, I'd suggest going and checking the phase. If you need to reverse the phase, click on the E button and just click on the reverse phase button 
Now I started the recording a little bit early because there's a lead in, so I'm just tidying up the intro. And now we've got the reamp sound mixed in with all of the original guitars. I can go through and do some panning. So I guess what I could do is have that reamp sound pan to the left and the original guitar line with the VST amp simulator pan to the right. Here's the reamp sound and the original sound going through VST amp rack together. If you're really into tone, you might choose to reamp, say, the lead tracks. Or if you're a bass player, maybe you want to reamp your bass line. It's really up to you. Here they are, both blended into the track. I know some guitarists that are going to be able to tell straight away if a guitar has gone through an amp simulator. But you talk about the average person, maybe not so much. But at least we know now that we've got the tools to set up an external effects send and return through VST connection. If it's going to make a guitarist and a bass player feel better about themselves, then it can only be a good thing, right? Just don't tell them it's going to a mix engineer. Thanks again for stopping by. I'll catch you soon.